video for Marcus Kids Days. I'm McKenna from Artists Working Education. I hope you're enjoying your summer so far and you're excited to do a new video with us today. So far we have mastered the first two elements of art. Do you remember what we did last week? So last week was element number two, shape, and then the first week we did was element number one, which was line. This week we'll learn about one of my favorites, which is color. We're going to do three different projects that explore what color means in artwork, and we're going to look at different ways you can add color to your art. First, we're going to ask ourselves, what is color? Do you know what the word color means? Color is light that is reflected off of objects. To see color, you have to have light. Without lights, we can't see color at all. We're going to read this book, The Mixed Up Chameleon by Eric Carl. Do you know what chameleons do that makes them so special? They're one of the animals that can actually change color. They change color based on their environment. So if they're in a green environment with a lot of leaves, they can start to turn green. And if they go in the dirt, they can start to turn brown. It's really cool. So we're gonna read this story and observe what different colors mean in the book. The Mixed Up Chameleon by Eric Carle. On a shiny green leaf sat a small green chameleon. It moved onto a brown tree and turned brownish. Then it rested on a red flower and turned reddish. When the chameleon moved slowly across the yellow sand, it turned yellowish. You could hardly see it. When the chameleon was warm and had something to eat, it turned sparkling green. But when it was cold and hungry, it turned gray and dull. When the chameleon was hungry, it sat still and waited. Only its eyes moved, up, down, sideways, until it spotted a fly. Then the chameleon's long and sticky tongue shot out and caught the fly. That was its life. It was not very exciting, but one day... The chameleon saw a zoo. It had never seen so many beautiful animals. The chameleon thought, how small I am, how slow, how weak. I wish I could be big and white like a polar bear. And the chameleon's wish came true. But was it happy? No. I wish I could be handsome like a flamingo. I wish I could be smart like a fox. I wish I could swim like a fish. I wish I could run like a deer. I wish I could see things far away like a giraffe. I wish I could hide in a shell like a turtle. I wish I could be funny like a seal. I wish I could be like people. Just then a fly flew by. The chameleon wasn't very hungry, but the chameleon was very mixed up. It was a little of this and a little of that, and it couldn't catch the fly. I wish I could be myself. The chameleon's wish came true, and it caught the fly. The end. This book showed us how every animal in the zoo was a different color, and they're all their own individual, they're all special, and we'll keep that in mind when we're going ahead learning about different colors. One characteristic of color is its value. Value is the word we use to describe how light or dark something is. For this first project, we're going to be making three different value scales. They show the color at its lightest, and then in between to its darkest. So for this project, you'll want some paper. You'll also want one color of a colored pencil and one color of a paint. You can use watercolor paint, acrylic, or temper paint for this project. For those of you who don't have paint on hand at the moment, we have a few recipes for non-toxic paint you can make with things in your pantry. The first recipe is to use vanilla pudding and food coloring. All you need is some pre-made vanilla pudding or you can use a box mix to make it. If you use a box mix, make sure you use water instead of milk. So once that is refrigerated and cooled down, you mix in your food coloring and it works kind of like a thick acrylic paint. The second method for a thinner glossy paint is using corn syrup and food coloring. You can just add in a few drops of food coloring until you get the desired color. 
And the third way you can use paint at home, and the third way you can make paint at home is by using a mixture of two parts cornstarch and one. And the third way you can make paint at home is by using a mixture of two parts cornstarch and three parts vinegar. Mix those together until it's thoroughly mixed, and then you add in a few drops of food coloring. Similar to the others, you just add in food coloring until you have your desired color. That will produce a liquidy type of paint that's similar to watercolor paint. Hopefully these recipes will help you out. It's kind of like a science experiment, and it's a fun activity to do together as a family. Revisiting our first project now, I drew my three value scales. I have one, two, three. I drew long rectangles and broke them up into six even parts. If we're going to do our value scale from light to dark, you can keep the first section on each value scale white, or you can add in just a little bit of color. The last one is going to be the darkest that the color can get. One way you can start this project is by doing the darkest section first. So if I'm going to have this as my darkest section, I can color it in and then see what colors I need to do in the middle four sections. I'm going to color it in pretty hard. You can push your pencil really into the paper to get that darkest value. Okay, that's colored in. And now I'm going to do the value that is not white, but just a little bit darker. I'm pressing my pencil down barely. I really just want it to be super light. And if you're unhappy with the lines in this, you can actually use your finger to blend. You can also use a tool called a tortillion, which is like a rolled up paper. And your finger just might get a little bit of graphite on it, but that will wash off. But ask your parent before you want to put your finger in the graphite. For the one next to the second lightest, I'm going to push my pencil down a little bit harder. But I still want this to be on the lighter side. last piece is almost like a puzzle. I need to make a color that's in between this and this. So I can push my pencil down pretty hard, but it's not going to be nearly as much as this one. Here's my first scale. We're going from light to dark and everything in between. For the second value scale, I'm going to switch it over to a colored pencil. Again, for this one, I'll leave the first section white, and then I'm going to make the darkest blue here. I think it's easiest to establish your lightest and your darkest color right away with this project, but if you would rather do all the colors in order, like go from here or this way, you can also do that. first two, I'm very much relying on the amount of pressure I use to change the value. So this is using the most pressure, this is the least pressure. With paint it's a little bit different. I'm going to be relying on water to adjust the value. So if I'm going to use a little bit of this blue acrylic paint to do my last box to make it as dark as it can be, I'm not using any water. This is going to be the color at its darkest. To make my second lightest value, I'm going to use barely any paint and lots of water, so I'm going to dab off my brush a little bit.
graphite, colored pencil, and paint. For our next project, we are going to talk about the color wheel. A fun fact about colors is that there are only three true colors. They're called the primary colors. All other colors on the color wheel are a mixture of those three colors. Do you know which three colors those are? If not, you can take a guess and name three colors. Those colors are red, blue, and yellow. When we mix together two of the primary colors, we get what is called a secondary color. If we mix together red and yellow, do you know what it makes? It makes orange. Orange is a secondary color. The other two are blue and yellow make green, and red and blue make purple. A color wheel is a visual tool that helps us see the relationships between colors. When we look at the color wheel, we can see complementary colors are located directly across from each other on the color wheel. They are opposites of each other. For example, purple and yellow are opposites. When you mix complementary colors together, they neutralize each other and they make brown. If you've ever mixed paint before, you might have noticed that if you mix together a lot of colors, it will turn your paint a dull color like brown or gray. You can draw your own color wheel by making a circle and breaking it up into 12 pieces like a pie. Start by picking one slice of the pie to be red. Now count four spaces away and add yellow. Now count four more spaces past yellow and that's where you will find blue. There should be three blank spots in between each color. In the middle spot between red and yellow, add orange. In the middle spot between red and blue, add purple. In the middle spot between blue and yellow, add green. Now with your extra spaces, mix together the two surrounding colors to get yellow-green, yellow-orange, and so on. Our next product is called the Color Garden. Gardens are already colorful, so we're going to draw them ourselves and study the different colors that we put in the garden. You're going to fill up your garden with different veggies, fruits, flowers, and bugs, and we're going to have different rules for everything we put in the garden. I'll show you as we go along, and you can draw along with me when you're watching the video. So everything we draw in this garden is going to have specific rules we should follow. The first thing we're going to do to challenge ourselves is to draw a flower using the three primary colors, blue, yellow, and red. You can draw any type of flower you like, and you can use any combination when you're using... You can draw any kind of... You can draw any kind of flower you like, and you can use different amounts of each color. There's my primary color flower. You can use a different color to make a stem and leaves on your flower if you want. So it looks like it is part of a garden. The next thing we're going to do is you're going to draw a vegetable and only use different values of the same color. So if you remember our value scales from the warm-up project, we're going to do one vegetable that uses different values. And if you remember what I did with the colored pencil when I did value, I pressed harder when I wanted it to be darker. So I'm going to draw a carrot, and the carrot is going to be different values of orange. The next thing we're going to add in the garden is a butterfly. And the butterfly is going to use the three secondary colors. Purple, which is a mixture of red and blue. Orange, which is a mixture of red and yellow. And green, which is a mixture of blue and yellow. Just like the flower, you can do any combination of these three colors. Now 
next, you're going to draw another object using complementary colors. The complementary colors I'm going to use are blue and orange. Those are going to be the two that I use. You can pick any two. The other ones to spark your memory are purple and yellow and green and red. These are colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel. So for your next object, you can do another plant, another flower, another vegetable, another bug. You can do any of those. I think I'm going to draw a caterpillar that uses blue and orange. Another way we can put colors into category is by warm and cool. So looking at this set and this set, which one do you think is warm and which one do you think is cool? The correct answer is that the blue, green, and purple are the cool colors, the red, yellow, and orange are the warm colors. To remember this, you can think about when you see snow and icicles, they might be looking a little bit bluish and it's very cold. And then when you see the sun and you see fire, those are warm colors, like usually red and yellow. Next, you can draw something using only warm or only cool colors. I'm going to use the warm colors and I'm going to draw another flower. broccoli. If you want to continue adding things to your garden, you can go ahead. And at this point, I'm going to start adding a background. For my background, I'm just going to be using colors that we see in the natural world, like brown, green, and then some blue. Here's my finished color garden with my primary flower, my complementary color caterpillar, my secondary color butterfly, my warm color tulip, my cool color broccoli, and my orange value scale carrot. That's kind of a mouthful. But here is how it looks when you finish the project. And I added in some brown dirt, blue sky, and a little bit of grass to make it look like everything was in the same garden environment. This is our third week, so we're going to be learning about our third artist. To refresh our memories, our first artist was Honor Matisse, and our second artist was Yayoi Kusama. This week, we're going to learn about an American artist. Her name was Alma Thomas. She lived in Washington, D.C. She was an expressionist painter and an art educator best known for her colorful abstract paintings. She would draw shapes on the canvas and then fill them in with color. Alma was interested in color theory, which is a study of the visual effects of different color combinations. Something interesting about Alma Thomas is that she wasn't recognized as a professional artist until after she retired from being a middle school art teacher. She believed that creativity should be independent of gender or race, creating works with a focus on accidental beauty and the abstraction of color. This painting is called Resurrection from 1966. We're going to create similar paintings using a stamping technique. You're going to need an item to use as a stamp. You can use a cork, a plastic cap, a small wheel, a Lego, a cardboard shape, or your own fingerprint. You will also need paper, acrylic or temper paint, and a paper plate to hold your paints. What we're trying to do is make uniform shapes. So if I'm going to use my fingerprint, I want all the shapes to be kind of similar. It's definitely okay if they vary, but the point of this project is to kind of focus on color while we make the pattern and keep the same color going for a while. I'll show you what all the different kinds of shapes that I have. I'll show you what all the different kinds of items I have, what kind of shapes those make.
One thing you'll notice is when you get fresh paint on your item, it's gonna be pretty noticeable on the paper. There's gonna be like a glob of paint. And then as you go, it'll just keep getting lighter and sometimes not even show up at all. So there's what the cap looks like. Here's what the cork will look like. I'm gonna use three acrylic paints. I have blue, red, and yellow. I'm gonna have these three primary colors so I can mix other colors with them if I want to to prepare for this project. Here's a little dab of yellow and some red. If you want to reference earlier in the video to use some of those homemade paint recipes, you can do that to find out how to make paint if you don't have any at home yet. So I have my primaries. I'm gonna make purple first. Purple is red and blue. Our goal in this project is to create fields of the same color, really focusing on the color itself instead of mixing our paints together or creating recognizable forms in the painting. We're going to make a shape with one color and then fill up the space by stamping with your cork or your other object that you're using. You can choose a pattern like the circle pattern that we looked at or you can work in lines. Fill up the space with your chosen color, then wash off your stamp and move to the next color. I'm going to start with yellow. If you want to wash off your stamp, you can use a bit of water and a paper towel or a napkin. I'm using a lot of paint, so I get more of a circle shape instead of something that is kind of incomplete. But if they're not all perfectly the same shape, that's fine. I think it looks cool that way. So I did my yellow. I'm going to wipe it off. I'm going to use some orange. And I'm going to choose this section to be my field of orange. You can make your stamps touch each other, or you don't have to. They can be a little bit apart, like how I'm doing it. Okay, I have two colors left to fill in. Red and purple. finished product. You can see that there's different colors but they all kind of have their own section and that section is called a field. That's why Alma Thomas is considered to be a color field painter. She created fields of color on her paper. If you used a lot of paint on this project like I did it might take a little bit to dry so just put it in a safe place and don't touch it for a few hours so all those big globs of paint can dry. And if your hands are a little bit messy, you might need to wash them with soap and water after using paint. But thank you all again for watching our video today. I hope you had fun and you got to explore colors a little bit more. Next week for our projects, we're going to want to have some recyclables. So if you have anything sitting in your recycling bin that you think you could repurpose for some art sculptures, you should take that out and save it. I'm talking like cereal boxes, 
maybe some plastic bottles, things like that, that aren't dirty anymore. They don't have any food residue, so you can save them. Next week for our project, you're going to want to have some recyclables that we're going to be building with. So if you have anything sitting in your recycling bin, like any cardboard boxes or cereal boxes or plastic bottles, things like that, we're going to be re repurposing those for art. In addition to that, you'll want to have some scissors, a pencil and paper, and some liquid glue and masking tape. Thank you for watching our video. I'm really glad that we got to make another art project together. Now we're three weeks in, so we have three weeks left with a program. I hope you can feel yourself getting more enthusiastic about art, maybe learning some things you didn't know before, and maybe even feeling like you're gaining some new skills in art. For a bonus project, you can mix colors at home using frosting and food coloring. This is a fun project because you can eat some frosting at the end. See what happens when you add a little bit of food coloring and a lot of food coloring. And you can also see what happens when you mix together different colors that are primary colors. Maybe you'll mix red and blue to get purple in your food coloring. You can experiment and see what happens when you mix together different colors.